Hello, everyone. Since the beginning, GS1 has always focused numbers to increase efficiency and to reduce the costs in the supply chain. But now we are entering a new era, a green era. Sustainability is now one of the main drivers in business, and I think that legislators, consumers, trading partners, and in investors would agree with me. So when we were uh, launching the innovation platform at GS1 Belgilux, we made sure that sustainability and circular economy were one of the priorities on the agenda. So in our pluriannual plan, we even have the following objectives, which are to engage more with circular economy stakeholders and to increase value for them by helping them to implement GS1 standards. Today we will be talking about a project called the Holy Grail 2.0, which has been set up to improve the sorting of plastic waste in the recycling process. And we have two great guest speakers here. We have Wouter and Francesca, who will talk to you about why this project has been set up and what is the solution and how can GS1 contribute to that solution. But before we go over to Wouter, uh, let's start with a quick video. Wouter, thank you very much for being here with us. Um, obviously, you have two hats on. So first of all, you work at Procter & Gamble, but second, you're also vice president of the GS1 Belgilux board. So from both perspectives, could you elaborate more on this project and how you are involved in it? Yes, so first of all, I'm very pleased to be here because sustainability is very close to my heart. And it's actually one of those moments, you know, where your job at PNG, my job in GS1 and my personal commitment go hand in hand, so that's the right place to be here, right? So let me put this a bit into, into context. I mean, for many years, we all have been in what they call a linear economy, which means that, you know, we use materials to make products, but after use, we simply trash them, which has a huge impact on our society, on waste, on climate. Now, in order, you know, there is the population that is growing. So in order to have sufficient materials to keep the world going, to have sufficient products while we're protecting our planet, you know, all in all, we need to move to circular economy, which means that we're able to prevent the waste by having a smarter design of our products, where simply, you know, we design them to be reused, to be able to repair them, we're able to recycle them. So all in all, this is really the context where the Holy Grail uh, fits. Okay, so Wouter, why is this new focus on circular packaging? Where does it come from? Mm -hmm. 
So circular packaging has been there uh, for a while, right? That's not a new thing. But many studies have been done on what is really needed to make a circular model work. Uh, one of the very clear models is, is the one that the Ellen MacArthur Foundation has developed. And they actually came up with four key building blocks that needs to be true to have circularity work. You know, there is a good product design. Uh, there is new business models with entrepreneurs and corporate uh, working together. There is a reverse flows that are crucial. But last but not least, it's really important, you know, that the context is right. And in this area, you know, things like the Green Deal are really crucial because policymakers have a crucial role to give a clear framework, international rules, not local rules, clear incentives to drive behavior into the right direction. So with this Green Deal now coming into place and with many stakeholders showing the commitment to move forward, I really think we have the right momentum now uh, to move forward. Okay. And... Um so it seems that it's very difficult to recycle plastic packaging. Why is that? And what does it need to turn this, uh, this plastic into, into a circular, circular model? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So actually, if you look purely technical, recycling plastic, there is many technologies available. There is chemical recycling, mechanical recycling. But you know, as with anything in, in data, master data, crap in is crap out. That is the best way to describe it. If we're not able to really split the, the materials into monomaterial streams, we're not able to recycle them, right? So simply said, our challenge is really to, to better detect the different types of materials, to sort them, and then really recycle each stream so we have better plastic. This was the objective of what they call now Holy Grail 1.0 which started around three, four years ago, which was also under the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. And that was really the first step to identify how can we do that, how can we identify these uh, materials. And the conclusion of that proof of concept was to work with uh, digital watermarking. So if you then look, and you can go to the, to the next slide. Now, now the proof of concept has been uh, confirmed. We want to make sure we, we prove the viability of the digital watermarks. We want to make sure it doesn't remain a small scale, but we really test it at an industrial scale. So that's really where we're now entering a new era with Holy Grail 2.0, where there's a the fusion with all the members you see on screen. I think it's more than 70 already growing every day of different types of players that all work hand in hand uh, to make this work. Okay, and um, you've talked about digital watermarking, and I think most of us know it as the invisible barcode, but could you explain some more? What, what is this uh, digital watermarking? Yes. So as you nicely see on the screen, you know, this is one example where as a consumer you see a pack that you don't see a different versions before, right? You know, it has an artwork, it communicates with you. Now the cool thing is, while it looks like this, it performs in a different way. And actually it performs like it has several stamps on the package, as you saw in the movie as well. And each of these stamps is a kind of a barcode if you want, but it contains more information. It contains, you know, the GTIN if you want, but it also contains the type of plastic, you know, the, the composition of a multiple object as such. So it's really cool, you know, it looks like a normal package, but it behaves like a smart package. That's really why this thing is so powerful. So if you then look, in the, so this is how, you, how it looks. If you then look, next step, how it looks on a sorting line, it's even more clear, I think, for people to understand it. So simply set a sorting line is a high-speed conveyor where, you know, everything you put in the blue back in Belgium, you know, you drop on it, and it's, it's a whole mix of materials. So the challenge is really that the camera that is on that sorting line detects the code as such why it's repeated so often because your packs typically are, are compacted or crushed. So it reads the code, it detects the kind of what type of material it is, and at high speed it's able to split it into different streams as such then allowing to have better recycling in the next step. So the breakthrough uh, technology. Okay, very interesting, and I assume it's also very ambitious. So, um, what do you think are the key challenges at this point? Yeah, so the key challenge, I think, and that's what I think GS1 typically gets into the picture, right, is we need to have an industry standard, because if you work on circularity with, uh, let's say, reverse flows, it only works if people are following the same methodologies, the same streams. So simply said, you know, standards are typically not perceived as a positive thing, right, let's be fair. I mean, except of the people in this room, nobody really thinks it's a cool thing. But I'm really convinced, you know, that standards are going to be, you know, the rock stars of the 21st century. They're really going to show us the way into circularity. And as such, I'm very pleased that GS1 is now uh, stepping in into, this, uh, into this project. Okay. Thank you, Wouter. Thank you for calling us rock stars. <laughs> uh, we have another rock star here, Francesca from GS1 Global. Francesca, thank you so much for being here. Could you elaborate more on what the role is of GS1. How can GS1 actually contribute to this project? 
Oh, thanks a lot, Karen, at first. Uh, really, many, many thanks for having me. Thanks to you, thanks to Jan, and I'm really surprised by this beautiful forum that you put together. So, best compliment. Yes, indeed, circularity is one of the priorities of the European Union, and it was already becoming clearer a few years ago when there was the previous um, term. And now with the new political term, and especially after the pandemic, it became clearer that uh, the way to go for industry is to get uh, more and more uh, engaged in the circular economy context. So it's definitely one priority. It's a big priority for all of us, both stakeholders, as Walter pointed out. And so we're very, very happy to see that uh, the European Union is taking some steps. So they are taking some legislative steps. And we in GS1 in Europe, we decided it was worth uh, to have uh, to start discussing about this in um, in our larger community. And so thanks for the opportunity today, because it gives us also the opportunity to relaunch, which are the basics for us behind what we can do for the circular economy as a big GS1 family. So at first, uh, we, we think one simple message is the fact that we think that the shared data is the new oil today. So for many, many years, we have read that the data was the, was the new oil, but we think that it is shared data now because you cannot really have a circular economy model if you do not invest in a circular data model. And this is what GS1 has been pointing out in a paper which is available today. We don't have the time to go through it. But the main message uh, is really the fact that if you want the data to circulate in a circular business model, of course, uh, you need to start with identification and proper identification based on global and open standards, because this is really the passport to enter this new circular economy model. And then uh, if you really want this language to be compatible with the web data, well, um, standards are really the basis as well. And so GS1 joined the collaboration with W3C, and we developed the first paper on this, which is, of course, available for uh, um, for uh, brainstorming of what is possible today, thanks also to the data that is shared through the web. But everything starts with products, everything starts with the packaging and the identification of products and packaging as we have seen in the Holy Grail. And if you start the data right, <laughs> many, many things can be deployed, like for instance, also speaking one single language all along with the supply chains, but also all along with the data, the web data language. Okay. Great, and Francesca. Then, yeah, continue. Continue. <laughs> yes, GS1 has entered into the Holy Grail project in the, the big consortium that was uh, developed. Uh, as Walter said, there are more than 85 uh, members in this consortium. And we are there with this, with the aim of uh, supporting uh, global and open standards for uh, identification, for data sharing, and for data capturing, if possible. So it's a big consortium where uh, business solutions are being discussed, but GS1 is there for, uh, for the standard, to enable one common language among all partners. Super, Francesca, thank you very much. So if you want to know more about this project we have some good news for you because we have our next innovation cafe on the 24th of november and we will explain this project even into more detail with more guest speakers subscribe you can just scan the qr code that is on your screen and you will land on our web page for more information and for registration so be safe and be green thank you thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you so much for your inspiring presentation. Yeah, you've heard it. There will be an event dedicated to this subject and you can already register for that for the GS1 Innovation Cafe on the 24th of November and it promises to be very, very inspiring.